Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at the drum instruction in the Click PLC uh, PLC. So a drum instruction actually um, looks like those old music boxes that you used to have where you wind them up and they had little pins with the round and they would click one at a time. Or you can think of it as just a big sequencer. So we sequence a, a number of different things at a time. So let's look at the actual instruction. And uh, we call it up. Here it is up here. And what you'll see is that over here we have our time base. In our case, we're going to use seconds. Um, in the current step, this tells you where your current step is located. So you can read what it is or set it. Uh, elapsed time in steps. This is a, a timer value, so we're using TD1, and a completion flag. This is what happens when you get reach the end of your drum sequence. Then we have an enabled jog input. So the enabled jog input, what it will do is, um, when you uh, activate this, it'll actually add another input to your drum sequence so that you can jog it. Also, there's a load new step instruction. Again, this will add a new input so you can specify when that input comes on it'll go to this step and that step is specified in ds2 then we have the number of steps and a number of outputs and as you can see on my screen we have our steps going from 1 to 16 and then our outputs from 1 to 16 so this is a 16 by 16 drum instruction um, and then on the bottom here we have our outputs um, and our outputs, in our case here, we're going to use Y1 to Y6. And what they're going to actually represent is a traffic light application. And what we'll do is turn on the red red. And the red, um, it'll go red on Y1, then yellow, then green, then red on the other traffic direction, then yellow, then green. So in order to actually do my... Um, logic or my sequence that's going to happen what I'll do is as I click on these it'll actually turn on and off those outputs according to what I have here so the first one I want is red red so that'll be one and four so as you can see red red then we go on the next step after three seconds so we have a, a three second duration overlap then what we have is a um, we will have a green and then red and that'll be on for 10 seconds then we'll have a yellow and then red which will be on for two seconds then we have the red red again for three seconds then we have the red uh, green for the other direction of the traffic and then we have the red yellow and then when it resets it goes back to the, again the red red and we start all over again so this is a very straightforward, very clean, a very easy way of, uh, of doing this. So here what you have here is the instruction in the PLC. And as you can see, I have a few inputs. I have a C1, uh, which is my complete flag, which I specified when I did the instructions. So when C1 comes on saying complete, it actually comes back and it resets it. Then I have a first scan flag. And the first scan flag, what it will do is say, if the PLC is lost, loses power and it comes back on, it will activate that first scan flag. And that first scan flag then will reset the drum back to the first instruction and start again. So our red, red. We also have the step, in, step number. So X1 goes into the step number and the new step is specified in DS2 where I want to go when I, that input comes on. And then finally on the drum instruction we have X2 which is our jog input. That's, we, that's the other input that we specified. And When the jog input comes on it just moves to the next step immediately without waiting for the time in our case. The other thing we can do with the drum mechanism if uh, we look on and we right click on the actual instruction go down to normal display you can see that we can we don't have to have all this detail but it's nice to have the detail so we can see what's going on so we'll leave it like that currently right now I'm hooked up to my uh, PLC 
and what we'll do is we will go into run mode and see how it looks and as you can see here's my run mode it highlights what step I'm on on a detailed instruction I can see here here's my time value I can compare that to my time duration here 10 and then it will move to the next step my current step right here we see we're on number four and it's and it's cycling through our instruction you can see the outputs turning on and off if I were to um, stop this halfway through we'll say we'll stop it on the, the green and we'll just go into stop mode so now we're back in the stop mode as soon as we start up because of the first scan flag it will actually go up and reset this drum uh, instruction back to red red so let's try that sure enough that's what it did and we're back to red red then going through our sequence again you notice here that I do not have a any um, enable input but if I did and I want to stop and start it at will I can put other instructions in there to stop and start it okay hopefully that's it for today hopefully uh, you, as you can see the drum instruction can be very powerful we could also do an event with the drum instruction telling it what inputs have to be turned on. Okay, if this uh, video has been helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up. And at the end of the video here, keep up with all the videos that we have by subscribing to our channel. And our, and our website can be found at accautomation.ca and there you can subscribe to our, our website. And at our website, you will actually be able to get free uh, ebooks. The first one is understanding PLC numbering systems and the second one is robust data logging for free. And that's just by subscribing to the website. Also, all the information that we just talked about today is in detail on our website. So head on over and take a look. Thanks for watching.